Welcome to Monday. It's the 19th day of February 2024, your day with a podcast brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism. Head to Thermopolis to swim, soak, and slide in the hot water. Check them out at thermopolis.com. Well, folks, we are going to see mild air pushing into the region. We kind of saw that in the second half of the weekend as the Pacific is going to dominate. It's really going to be all about the Pacific here in the coming seven to 10 days and probably beyond. When you have a dominant Pacific pattern, you're generally going to see temperatures that really aren't going to be all that cold, but you are going to be susceptible to Pacific moisture and Pacific storm systems. So this is going to mean a mild start of the week on the plains, but occasional snow is going to be falling this week in the high country, especially as we get into the next 72 to 96 hours all across the West. It's going to be really wet in California, across parts of the interior West, as a, we're seeing a pattern that is kind of reminiscent to what we had a couple of times last winter, where you just have this Pacific pump of moisture that's coming into the West Coast. Some of that moisture has the potential to go down Interstate 80 Wednesday and Thursday. We're not 100% sure, but for anybody with travel plans Wednesday, Thursday, the I-80 corridor of Utah and Wyoming might have some impacts with some snowfall. Uh, that'll be something to keep an eye on. We're also going to be watching that strong jet stream wind. For those of you that watched the podcast last week, we showed you a couple of days where a very strong jet stream pattern was developing across the North Pacific. That is going to continue to be something to monitor because eventually those strong jet stream winds hit the western United States next week, and that's going to create some weather. Also, we, with all the snow, and there was a lot of snow that fell last week in the mountains of Wyoming and parts of Colorado and Utah and Idaho and parts of southwest Montana, we want to pass along some avalanche information sources as I think the pattern we're going to see in the coming weeks is gonna to lead to more mountain snow and more avalanche concerns. Now I took this photo on Saturday. This was a satellite image taken mid to late afternoon on Saturday that showed the snow that fell with those systems last week. So you can see just about all of Wyoming was white, then a streak of white here across Northern Nebraska, South Dakota and Minnesota and Iowa. And then we saw a large part of Montana there. So you can see where the snow fell with that last system. Temperatures though today and what we saw yesterday melting a lot of that away, but pretty impressive in terms of how much snowfall it went down. Now I wanna talk briefly about these avalanches. All those red dots are where we had observed avalanche activity in the region here over the last week or so. So you can see all the dots there around Jackson and Western Wyoming and Eastern Idaho down here as well. We'll show you other locations like a lot of activity there in Utah. And uh, in southern Wyoming, I want to let folks know that uh, the Bridger Teton Avalanche Center, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, we, they have a link now for eastern Wyoming to show avalanche concerns for places where you don't really think about it much, uh, but uh, we've had avalanche activity in the Sierra Madres and the Snowy Range. That happens more than you think, but uh, it's a small area, so there hasn't been a lot of available avalanche information. But Bookmark this website, oops, sorry about that. Bookmark this website if you're a cross-country skier or a snowmobiler that plays around in the mountains of Southern Wyoming. This is a really good resource. And also, speaking of the snowy range, after somewhere upwards of two to three feet of snow late last week, you can see these were naturally triggered slides there in the high snowy range. So folks out back country, having fun on the snowmobiles and skiing, be careful because there's more coming. And talking about these resources, again, these are things you want to bookmark. The Bridger Teton Avalanche Center is just a fabulous resource to really see what's going on, not only in the Bridger Teton area, but really a great source of links that gets you into avalanche information elsewhere. Also, Colorado has a great website to track avalanche conditions in Colorado and so does Utah. Now I'm not, I'll show you later on where you can get resources for further west, but uh, the Utah Avalanche Center, the Colorado Avalanche Center, the Bridger Teton, all of those are great links 
And I think something that is uh, more and more of a concern as snow machines get better, technology gets better, you can get further back, you can get higher up, avalanche concerns are going to be high. And you can see why with all that fresh snow there, a Mount Massive near Leadville, Colorado, and there's more coming. We'll show you that here in a minute, but we still have all these beautiful sunrises and sunsets coming as well. Satellite imagery this morning showing the next low spinning there off the California coast. This little wave right here produced some snow and wind in the mountains overnight and is now heading out into the plains. But there's a, a gap with high pressure here. But this guy is just going to spin around on its heels here, counterclockwise, pushing more rain and snow into California, Washington, and Oregon. And you can see we've got winter storm warnings for the mountains. The green areas are flood advisories. Take California is just going to be under the gun, really, for the next several days. That moisture producing some snow there in the northern areas of the Wasatch and the Uintas. Strong winds here along the Interstate 80 corridor. Here we go with the pattern as we are today. With that low sitting off the west coast, a little sliver of high pressure going to give us some mild weather here to start the week along the front range in the Rocky Mountain front from Montana through Wyoming and Colorado. But as we get into Wednesday, so today and Wednesday, part of that low kind of weakens and heads east. But what's going to happen? And this is something we saw last winter at times where you get these lows that just kind of sit off the coast. The southwest flow of air kind of just becomes a pipeline of moisture feeding into the mountain ranges of the interior west. And it's, it's a mild pattern because there's really no Canadian connection here. So it tends to be high water content air. The warmer the air, the more water the air can hold. And when you get this type of moisture coming into the major mountain ranges of the West, it's just a great way to make it snow. Now by Thursday, we still have another low. That's going to again feed more moisture into California and the West by the end of the week. So that's why it's just going to be wet on the West Coast continuously. And then what's left of these storms is kind of migrate West to East across the nation. But it will keep temperatures mild, relatively speaking, as the colder air will be more towards the Great Lakes there and Northeast. So let's put the precipitation chart in motion. We're gonna do this through Thursday. And you can see all the precipitation there in California, but I want you to kind of notice what happens right here. Again, this is something that we saw last winter at times where there's just a feeding of that moisture into one particular channeled area here, which basically goes from Central California across northern Utah, then that I-80 stretch, kind of that I-80 corridor there, you can see that heavier precipitation forming middle to late in the week. Whether or not it gets out of the plains is something that we'll need to watch, but this is a great way to produce a lot of snow in this particular area right here in the mountains of southern Wyoming, northern Colorado, Utah, of course, the Sierra Nevada. Now, you're not going to have much else going on, at least through most of this week, when you get up here and you get down here. So basically it's kind of a finger of heavier moisture that's getting pushed along the Interstate 80 corridor. And that's going to affect the mountain ranges. And there's your snowfall forecast between now and Thursday. So as we get into Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday, Interstate 80 travelers right there, watch for that, I-70 as well. Then as we go out further, this is a week from today. Here are the strong jet stream winds we were showing you with those black lines all stacked together. And here we can see it across the Pacific. Here's the West Coast, back over here, back over here to near Japan. And you can see that strong jet stream wind is gonna go across the Aleutians, then start to nose its way by late in the weekend and early next week into the Pacific Northwest. We still have a Southern branch of the jet, but the Northern branch is the strongest. And there we can see it diving in. So once this comes in, we're going to see some type of a larger storm somewhere in the Western United States, probably towards early to mid next week as the strong jet stream energy comes in. So it's going to be a busy weather pattern, although for most of this week, as we showed you on the precipitation graphic, it's going to be the West Coast, the interior West, that's going to have most of the action. The weather out onto the plains for most of the week, generally speaking, will be fairly mild and breezy. Expects, except some of those areas that we highlighted. And if you look 
just over the next 10 days. Over the next 10 days, the mountain snows are very impressive. So that's going to help the snowpack. And when we get new snowpack numbers for you, hopefully by tomorrow, we'll update you. But there has certainly been some movement in snowpack figures. But this is a very moist pattern for the mountains of the west over the next 7 to 10 days. Not a lot on into the plains. However, I think we're not seeing what is potentially could come out into the plains the middle of next week. Something we'll just keep an eye on. And there you can see over the next, this is through Sunday. As you see through Sunday, there's going to just be a good pipeline of mountain snow coming on in. Have yourself a good Monday. We will see you on Tuesday.